You've got a tune to KEXP listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming live at KEXP.org. I'm Cheryl Waters. I am so excited to have our good friend Jessica Lee Mayfield and her band in studio. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be back here. I haven't been to the new place, but it's gorgeous. It's so great to have you here. You look amazing in the space. Thank you. As always, I have so many memories of uh, your wonderful outfits. I'll never forget the shoes you were wearing at the Austin session at Mellow Johnny's uh, a bunch of years ago. Oh my gosh, high heels and so sparkly. They just uh, were gleaming. But you're gleaming today. You have a very powerful and gorgeous new album, Sorry Is Gone. You're going to play songs from that today? Yes, absolutely. Jessica Lee Mayfield live on KEXP. Jessica Lee Mayfield live on KEXP. Songs from the new album, Sorry Is Gone. Tomorrow night she'll be at the Tractor Tavern here in Seattle. Thank you. 
You're listening to 90.3 FM KEXP and to KEXP.org. Jessica Lee Mayfield is live in the studios today and again, sounding so great. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Absolutely love this new record. And I counted it up and this is your, I think, seventh uh, visit to the KEXP Airwaves. We started oh. way back in 2008 with your Holy guacamole. beautiful new first album. <laughs> and uh, you stopped by the morning show with John at the Americana Fest in mm -hmm. Nashville late last year, but I feel like we've watched you grow up as a solo artist, but for fans who may not go back quite that far, you've been making music your whole life. It was a, yeah. it's, a, it's a family business. Yes, it, I've been doing it since I was eight years old, so that's kind of when I started like touring and playing with my family's bluegrass band. So from there, somehow I ended up here, I think out of rebellion and a uh, need to be different, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, where are you living now? I know we, when we first heard about you as Jessica Lee Mayfield, uh, a lot was said about you being from Ohio. Um, but I know, it, I think you spent time both between Tennessee and Ohio so growing up. I was born in Ohio and raised in Tennessee and then moved back to Ohio, moved back to Tennessee, moved back to Ohio. And now I live in Tennessee again. Well, it so. sounds like you've got a long history with both of those areas. Yeah, it's weird. and if, So it makes me feel like I don't really have a hometown. And then sometimes certain, it's like our, a home state, because sometimes certain states will claim me and then they won't. They'll be like, oh, you know, Ohio native. And then they'll be like, Nashville. You know, she moved to Nashville now and they won't like, I don't know. It's weird. It's like Ohio either wants me or they don't. Oh, I bet they want you. We'd claim oh. you if we could. I'll, I'll <laughs> just go ahead. I'll just move here. Okay. Okay. From KXP now. You are always welcome here, as we said. So many visits, uh, such great visits. Last time you were in the Seattle studios, you were here with Seth Avitt. Yeah. And he helped you out on your new album, is that right? Yeah, um, he sang on a few songs. And when I was actually working on Sorry Is Gone, we had recorded the song Sorry Is Gone. And I, we were talking, John and Ella and I were talking about who could sing on it. And I was immediately thought Seth and I called him I was like hey you want to sing on this he was immediately down we sent it to him he sent it back before I even left the studio and then him and John just kept talking and working on it and he ended up singing on that and maybe whatever let's talk about this new album um it's very powerful I'm one of those people who hears music first I started hearing uh the beautiful melodies and the wonderful guitar work and instrumentation on this album and I was actually even singing along to some of the lyrics that floated to the top as you do when you love a song belting them out and then not even realizing what they were about I started to um listen more closely and hear some of the deeper topics. Um, this is obviously a very personal album. It's not the first time that you've put your personal life, um, a life that's been quite lived, <laughs> quite an adventurous life. Um, but this one, a little bit different than your previous albums. Can you talk about it a little bit? Well, I, I didn't realize what this album was going to be about when I started writing. I just started writing a lot and the theme came and I realized that there were a lot of answers in the in the songs and I think I was in a place where I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone about the situation that I was in and I wanted to put my feelings somewhere and it ended up, you know, being this album that was really that is one of the most personal albums which is funny because I've, it's a, such a weird thing to do to sing your personal feelings over melodies that you come up with that just it still seems bizarre to me but I'm definitely hoping that I can somehow help other people that have been in my position just by knowing that it's okay to to talk about anything and everything. And I think that's when people don't want to talk is when it gets dangerous. You know, it's like if, it, if these things are hiding in the dark, then that's, they won't go anywhere. It, the hardest things to talk about often let you know where, you know, the hard work is and the road to healing and recovery. You made a very courageous move in July when you posted a picture of yourself in the hospital recovering from surgery, which was a result of domestic abuse, and uh, right. sharing that healing and road to recovery, as you mentioned, publicly, very scary, but I imagine that you're touching so many people. I mean, 
What yeah. have you heard from your fans? Oh, definitely. You know, so many people come up to me and, and just talk to me about, you know, their experiences and letting me know that it has helped them and that they're thankful <laughs> that I spoke up. And I think that was the hardest. The hardest part was deliberating as to whether or not I wanted people to know my personal business. And obviously I don't, but I feel like the the more important issue is talking about domestic violence than, you know, people not knowing my personal issues. So I'd rather talk about all of my personal issues and let everyone know it's okay to have personal issues. We've been um, very vocal on KEXP using our airwaves to let people know that they're not alone for the past year or so. We've been talking about mental illness. Our morning show host shared that he suffers from depression and more and more people here are talking about it. We've devoted some airtime for people to tell their stories and we want people to know that they're not alone. And I'm curious, how has that helped your healing being more public about this? Um, it definitely is a reminder, that, and that's really cool that you guys do all that. It's, it's definitely a reminder that um, you're not alone. And I think in these situations, you can isolate yourself really quickly and feel isolated. And, and I don't know, it's, it's a really, it's a strange thing how it sort of perpetuates itself. And so it's good to know that this isn't something that you're dealing with alone, that you have to bear on your shoulders by yourself. How are you doing now? Uh, much, much better. Yes, I'm very happy. Um, you know, I <laughs> just, I am so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm in a place now where I do feel safe and that means everything in the world to me, you know, and the little things mean everything to me, like donuts and this stupid, you know, it's like I, I'm in this place in my life where I just like, I'm just thankful to be alive. So everything means everything. Well, I appreciate you talking about this because it's one thing to decide to share this publicly and then to put this in a record, but then you play it every night. You have to talk about it day after day oh, yeah. in these interviews. So, I mean, you know, the courage just continues and thank you. We appreciate you. I, I know that it helps a lot of people. I'd like to talk about the making of this album. It seems like that was a very happy experience. You mentioned John and Yellow. You worked with him. How, how was that and the time with the band? And I adore him. Um, I adore Steve, Shelley, and Cameron DL, and Emil Amos. Uh, I'm a fan of Holy Sons, which I don't know if you're familiar with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, if not, you should be. Yeah. But um, So I really just... There, everything was so easy and I felt like everybody was into it and they got the, the vibe and sometimes when you're working with other musicians it can seem like I met them and they just got it immediately and we started practicing and I, I, and I knew that I didn't have to explain myself to John because he's a uh, you know creator of that type of vibe that I enjoy so I'm like okay you know you this you and this vibe go way back you get me it's too easy like I wanted it to be less easy that's funny. <laughs> I, like, I was like, I wanted to have an opinion. I'm, I wanted to be like, I don't like that. But everything, every idea, I was just like, I love it. You're such a good songwriter and lyricist that a lot of people forget what a great guitar player you are. And you kind of went balls out on your last album oh, with shucks. the guitar. But even when you play subtly, um, as, as you do, although this is a very diverse album, I would say. Um, but were you able to geek out with him on the guitars and all the pedals and stuff like that? That's, I think that's what made us... Uh, fall for each other musically was we we met up and had brunch and mimosas and as soon as we started talking guitar pedals we were there for two hours and then I was I was in New York for a couple of days doing some stuff at Electric Lady and I after we had brunch I invited him over to come look at the pedals I had there and we were in it he brought a big box to the studio and definitely we totally nerded out it sounds like a lot of fun Again, such an incredible lyricist. You always have been. And I just have to ask you about your blue tote bag. Can you tell our listeners <laughs> about that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, the tote bag full of songs. Yeah, that's. I, so I just have like a weird knockoff leather bag. And it's full of different songwriting remnants. And a lot of times if I can't get to paper, I'll try. I'll put something on my phone. But I do like to write things down. And I'll just write it on anything and then put that in the bag and kind of just dig through the bag when I'm looking for 
something, which I'm, I'm very disorganized, so it sounds insane, but it works for me. I love the visual <laughs> of that, putting together songs from little scraps from it's like a bag. It's like the Barney bag of songwriting. It's just like, oh, what a, what, what's this verse? Oh, okay. Does it work there? No? <laughs> We're live in the KEXP studios with Jessica Lee Mayfield. Can you introduce this band? Yes, this is Ben Parks on the drum kit and Rodrigo Avendano on the electric bass guitar and Patrick Dampier on the other electric guitar and harmony vocals. Well, it's so wonderful to have you here. The new album, Sorry, is gone. And what's next? Uh, we're going to play a song called Meadow. <laughs> Live in the KEXP studios, it's Jessica Lee Mayfield. Thank you. Sorry. 
Ah, oh, that sounds so wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry is Gone is the new album from Jessica Lee Mayfield out on ATO Records, and it is always a pleasure to see you. Please come back soon. Oh, yes, happy to stay a little bit longer. Thank you. <laughs> You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. Yay. I, I got to hear the instrumental version and the vocal version. <laughs> that was great. We fixed it. Thank, Thank you. you. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org. <laughs>